Hello there, everybody. This is James, and welcome to episode 121 of Doug Whippies FC. It's a new season. It's a new time. We're going to do it all again. We won everything last year. But there's one feat we haven't accomplished yet. And I don't know if we'll do it this year, but it'll be interesting if we do. That's the Invincible season. Here is what we're looking at this year, what we're in. Community Shield, Caballero Cup, FA Cup, European Super Cup, Champions League, Premier League. Uh, we won the Community Shield. Not that anybody cares. Um, Caballero Cup isn't important to us, so really we're fighting on three fronts. League, Champions League, and FA Cup. Caballero Cup we're going to treat as a rotational tournament. They're going to be where our second team plays. Hands down, that's just what's going to happen. I know I kind of went after it last year because I was like, yeah, I win all the cups, but... I'm not worried about the cup. Let it go. So in the Premier League, if we go here and let's come over here to season preview, we are odds on to win this year. We have <laughs> we have the team of the season. Our entire team is the best team of the season. Or right, hang on, is that? Oh, I know that that's that's not it. If we do, if yeah, yeah, here we go. We've got a lot of the team this season. We have Molina, Martinez, Wright, and Pepe, which is great for us. And I know you probably looked at that right there and go, whoa, what's going on here? Well, it wouldn't be an episode like this if we didn't have transfers. So let's talk about the transfer history here. And let's talk about the fact that we spent $110 million, but we sold $330 million. I had been threatening for a long time that we were going to sell a lot of players for a lot of money. And we're going to trim the fat. And we did. Starting with Philip. He went to Barcelona for $125 million. I looked at him and Martinez, and I just liked what Martinez had better technically than Philip mentally. So Barcelona came a calling, and I went, sure, take the money and run. And uh, we did. Next, uh, Lorenzo Abal. Went to Atletico Madrid for 51 million pounds. I think that's a fair deal. We brought him in for 21 million. So to pretty much double our profit on him, or to, to double our money on him. And to be honest, he really wasn't doing anything for us. I was not happy with him as a background striker. So off he goes, and uh, more power to him. Next, Leip's uh, going to... Uh, SBL was Camilo. It was another one of those deals where I wanted to get young. I had the younger guy on my left hand side as Alessandro, as you know. So we went, we took him, we sold him on, got a nice hefty profit for him. He's not playing to any of our, you know, any of our league rivals, and you know, more money in the bank, less money we have to pay out. Uh, Joan Macau. Went out to Milan for, was it 30 million pounds? Made a profit on him. Very happy with that. Jonathan Gearman finally left the club. Uh, this was the guy who, when we had our takeover, was signed by the board. And we didn't have any say in it. It was good for years, but really wasn't fitting into our midfield anymore. So it was time to let him go. We made a loss on him of about 20 million, but I considered a win of 31, uh, of 30 million, because I didn't sign him. Atletico Madrid picked up another one of our attacking midfielders, Wander, who we brought in, who was complaining about playing time. And I said, listen, you're not happy about it, you can go. And uh, yeah, I think, I don't know what we originally brought Wander in for. We brought him in on a free. Uh, that's just, that's just, that's just business. That's good business. Fabio Mahares uh, went to Florentina because he was also complaining about stuff. And I just said, sure, go. Alexander Muskvar Mamrovsky, our Macedonian everything player. You would have signed him probably in our Champions uh, chip season plus first season in the uh, Premier League. He was a good squad player to have, but was never really going to get out of our under-23s, and I wasn't about to pay him a new contract, so we let him out. Letting him go for that much was eh, but, you know, money's money. Lee Thompson left, and everybody will remember Lee Thompson uh, as our right winger for years, he was a great player for us, but 
it was time to move on. We have much better quality in that department. And so he left on a free. Other people who left, Braham Sano is on, on loan, along with a bunch of other guys we don't need to go into. Mercau started on a loan, but we transitioned it to just have him buy him. Jonathan Suarez, to Stone, uh, no Robert, just a lot of people just to get more experience. And now let's talk about the ends. So he's ran 110 million, but you're going to see a theme with all of these players here. Uh, we'll talk about Lewis at the end, but first, uh, Thomas Anthier, a 20 year old Austrian, he was, he was 19, we brought him, uh, Austrian midfielder. Uh, he's a ball winning midfielder and he's just one of those guys where he can, you know, play kind of down the line in the back. More of a defensively minded midfielder, which I think I wanted to kind of t position ourselves to get a little bit more of. So I'm happy with that. He looks to be a good player. We sent him out on loan to get train to get some game time in. Uh, it looks good as a ball winning or a defending midfielder or somebody who can play holding midfield for us. And uh, to bring him in for only 1.5 million, I think it's good. Then from AS Monaco, who they are probably. And my board didn't really like this decision, but I think it's a good piece of business. Is Elder Guardido, a Brazilian defensive midfielder, for eleven million pounds, only on thirty-eight pounds a week. Once again, a guy who we can bring in who is a defensive midfielder. Great passing, first touch, vision, bravery. He's got some D okay physicals, but you know he's not a guy we're going to ask to do much. But as a deep line playmaker and defend. He can fill that role. He's kind of a, he's also listed as an emergency backup to Antonio Manuel Molina, who's you know obviously our best center back. But he can fill into that role for us really well. He's an emergency backup. He's not going to ask for a lot of playing time. He's 22. He's in our reserves. I don't think paying too much money for him is a bad thing. Also can deputize at center back or play a little bit further up the field as a deep line playmaker there. I like this kind of guy. Plays simple passes, plays one twos. I think he can do great. And once again, he's, we're not expecting a lot from him. They say he's only a championships player. That's fine. I don't need him to be a five-star. Um, next one that comes in, uh, Rudy Cock. Yeah, Rudy Cock. He's a uh, left winger slash striker. Uh, looks to have five-star potential, three-star potential now. Could play. For us, kind of a third choice left winger, fourth choice striker. Uh, but he's 17. He's obviously being developed. And um, let's be honest. I'm looking to have the strike partnership of Asman and Cock leading the line for us. Yeah. I'm not 10 years old or anything. Moving on. We picked up a striker, a 16-year-old striker, James Parr from Reading, uh, for 11.75 million pounds. This is just, he, he's a high-potential English striker. We picked him up because young English talent, homegrown at club. This is a Champions League signing. This is a guy who may take over when, Pe I mean, he's 16 now. Pepe is, what, 26 so give this guy, you know, four or five years. This guy may be a world beater. When Pepe is getting close to retirement, this could be Pepe's replacement. And for the cheap amount, not too bad. Boy Van Der Veel is a an attacking a Dutch attacking midfielder from Utrecht that we got because, well, he's eighteen. He's got the ability to be signed at club, uh, homegrown at nation, homegrown at club which is what we want, so it's the Champions League signing again. Uh, he's young, 18, got plenty of room for develop. He's got some good st stats about him, first touch, passing, technique, flair, teamwork, decisions, determination is good, bravery is good, natural fitness is high. I mean, he's not Herrero, like a towering attacking midfielder or a playmaker, but he's very good for what we wanted to do. 11 million pounds a week is next to nothing. You can kind of see, like, the player salaries we're getting rid of you know, I think one of these guys could salary. I think Philip salary could like play for like the three players I just showed you. Then from Catadilla, we've got uh, Manuel Camino, who we brought in for five billion pounds. He's an eighteen-year-old right back with a lot of potential, with four-star potential. 
And we brought him in because he's got four-star potential, he's young, he can sit in the reserves and develop. Because that's what we want him to do. And 875 pounds a week is nothing. So just a young potential, just trying to fill out those teams. By the way, 16 tackling. Um, you know, a good tackler. Then we went a little bit outside of everything. For 20,000 pounds, we've got a 18-year-old is a Bur- Burkina Faso striker. Uh, Seyodo Bohemi looks like he's got three and a half, maybe four star, three and a half potential, two and a half stars. Just another young striker to bring in. He's got some ability. I mean, he's dribbling for it, finishing first touches there. He's got some acceleration, not a lot of good other stats, but I think he's got room for, to develop and has potential. And if we're only paying him three pound, three K pounds a week, you got him for 20 K. I think that's good business. If he if we turn around and we just and we even get like a million pounds for him, it's good business. By the way, uh, I forgot Furman Martinez, uh, an Icelandic, uh, an Icelandic center back that we brought in for five hundred k. He looks good. He's seventeen. He wants to get young players that could be home club, club homegrown country. High determination and teamwork. Thirteen work rate can go higher, but I think this guy could develop. He's got some skills. To be a, I think we're training him to be a ball playing defender, right? Right, everybody? Right? No. Well, he is now. Ball playing defender. Automatic. He can definitely do that. He's got the, he's got some of the skills. Too. Positioning, vision. I like that. And he's only 17. I don't expect him to be world beaters, anything below 17. Um, Lorenzo Ibanez, a 18-year-old left. You you guys are catching a theme here, right? Uh, 4,000 pounds a week. Um, we brought him in for 3.5 million. Just a young, smart-looking left back to bring in to be like way down the list because we've got so many people who can play it. But good work rate, teamwork, determination. He's got some stuff. He's got some stats about him. We're training him to play complete wing back he just looks good and for the price that what we're paying him i think it's solid just keep it just keep them coming keep the english boy and then our, finally our big splurge of the transfer window uh he was on the transfer list and i picked him up lewis nut so i have cock ass man and nut yeah yeah that's right uh english winger he's capped at under 21 Three and three star ability, four and a half, three and a half star potential. I think that can eke up a little bit. Um, he's gonna be. We ha, we've got Guto on the right wing, as as our backup to Fetz, and then Pedro Luis as well. But I don't really know if I'm sold on Pedro, and he's a squ- and he's fickle. This guy's resolute English talent, and if you look at him too, what is he not good with? He doesn't have the great jumpest reach. I don't know why he's a four. And, oh no, that's Guto. Sorry. Yeah, Lewis, no, if you look at him, what's his worst abilities? He's got a little bit low work rate, and he's not, he's a peripheral figure right now, but he's a good player for the Premier League. He is fast. He can play multiple positions. He's very agile. He's He can prove a bit. He's inspirited. And then he counts as homegrown in nation and league. And he's a physical player, which we like. I think it'll be good for the team. And that's it. That's everybody we brought in. Uh, we, 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 our finances are looking very healthy after everything we did. Uh, went from 8.75 up to now 372 million pounds or 87. And then another thing to note, and I don't know where I can find it. Let me see club vision. I got a new contract, and then the the stadium is being yeah expanding ground. We're expanding the ground, which will be done in a couple of months or be done next year. Uh, which is just limiting the uh, season tickets for a while. But I think they're making us like a fifty five thousand seater now, because we've had continental success. So that's everything that's happened in the team. That's all the transfers. Nothing else is going on. Now we're going to go to the team report, not the team report, the tactics, because we're going to be playing a game tonight against Newcastle. And Herrero picked up a slight knock, was a bruised uh, bruised thigh. He's going to be out for the next couple of days. 
that's fine. Martinez, I was planning on swapping him and Martinez anyways, have Martinez start to play in the advanced playmaker or attacking midfielder role, have Knight play in the advanced playmaker role. And uh, yeah, Brody, Thibault, Lopez, Molina, Watson, Keating, Knight, Wright, Martinez, Fetz, and Pepe leading the line with Degling on the bench along with Alex, Guto, Poole, Moreno, Medev, and Monfanti. That's right. Alexandro Monfanti, the guy who's going to take over in the left wing position. Uh, it's time to get him in. It's time, time to start getting him reps. I'm ready for him. Come in. And then you're probably also going to look go, James, your squad is still huge. You're absolutely right. There is a lot of players still here. But all of these players were all our players for the most part. Pedro Luiz, Koei Makinwa, Julian Sehai, who is a midfielder I'm very interested in playing. Uh, one of our own for our academy, Washington Andre. So we've got a large squad again, but it's not because I bought players. It's because I'm using players that we've had in our under 23s. And a lot of these guys are going to be playing for the reserves as well. So they won't just be sitting here with me. Hey, I know that guy. McCarthy's one of, was one, or Ed Manning used to be one of ours. Good to see him find a spot. I didn't see him as a striker. He played 109 times for Ipswich. Good for him. How many goals did he score? 45. Good for him. Is McCarthy, is this our McCarthy? No. No, Danny McCarthy. Is Turner one of ours? Turner was one of ours. And by one of ours, I mean, like, he was Manchester United, and then we took him. <laughs> he turned into a... I don't know why they have him at center back, but sure. It's always funny now that you see so many of our own players. Uh, so, obviously, there's the team. Go right into the dressing room. Tell the boys uh, with a favorite reason. Go out there and show them reason why. And then let them all know that I have faith in them. This is at St. James Park. Uh, I'm focusing on this. Kickoff time. Vamanos. Let's go the boys. It's good to get them back on the field. It's good to be back to uh, season one. Nice season, or I shouldn't say season one. It's good to be back in the early season as Knight finds a beautiful ball in the Fets. Fets is going to take it all the way himself. Forces the turn, uh, the uh, save there. And we go again. Pepe heads it down right there. He can lash it at goal. Decides to go back to Molina who finds Watson. And the highlight's over. It's good to be back in, oh, as Ivichik's free kick doesn't bother Brody at all. Who finds, well, tries to find right. And he eventually gets on the ball after a poor pass by Watson, who sends through Pepe. And he's back at it. The man in form. Pepe scores his third of the season. That was first in the league. He, played, he scored two in the cup. And it is a beautiful assist by Wright, who just slots Pepe through, just bangs it home into the corner, off the post. He goes into the... Uh, He's the man in form. He's our <laughs> he's our striker. God, what what would we do without him? So Watson here to Martinez, back out to Watson, who finds Knight, whose header doesn't really ever challenge the keeper, but it's good on him as Watson finds Pepe, whose first time shot uh, gets saved by the keeper. But here we go again, Martinez to Watson. Is he going to do the cross again? Nope, gets closed down better this time. But uh, Wright gets it. Thibault's in a ton of space. Takes the shot on himself. Good save by the keeper. And we are still winning. It's only 18 minutes into this game. Fetz his corner in. Tries to find Pepe in the back post. Molina. Highlight over as we thought. Fetz again. Near post this time. Molina scores it. Wow. I didn't expect to have a center back score. We don't usually have our center back score goals. And that's like Lorathru. Fetz is there. Molina on the volley good for him as we move up to second now Fett's having a good game Pepe obviously having a great game and yeah 2-0 lead going into halftime if it's just his ball once again too high and long finds Brody who is going to look to spring a counter attack let's see here finds Molina out to Watson. Back to Brody, who's going to kick it long. Maybe. Nope. To Molina. Lopez. 
Lopez finds Thibault, who heads it down to Fetz, and here we go. Fetz goes in, drives on his own, finds Martinez, gets it through to right. Beautiful plink up play here. Ramirez gets the save, but that was a great link up play there. Now Fetz goes, finds it in there, gets it to Pepe, who gets it pet headed down. Gilligan tackles Knight, and now Newcastle are breaking. As McCarthy's out here on the left hand side, going down. Cro Cross comes in. That was a shot. Ooh, whoa, Brody. <laughs> Take it easy there, buddy. All right. Now, they're on the ball. Wow, there's a lot of highlights for this first half. As uh, we got Watson on the ball here from Molina. Back to Molina. Finds Lopez. Back to Molina. To Keating, to Lopez, to Molina. To Fetz. Doesn't get quite on it. Gilligan's there. Sends it through to Jelenk. Jelenk is... Okay, it's a corner. I got worried there for a second. It was his second yellow card. But nope, just a corner. Mannion's there. Heads it down. Brody collects. Martinez is over the ball here. Finds it. But now he's is too deep. And Ramirez can start a counterattack here. Not so much, though. Looks like we've got everything covered. The kick is errant. And Thibault clears up and kick collects it. Gets it to Brody. Who will find Thibault again. Lopez. So we're just going to work the ball here in the back half. Here. Now we get it to Thibault. Thibault here. Holds up for Fetz. Fetz. He's got Thibault on the run. There he is. Thibault can cross it in. He does. He finds Pepe. And there's another save. This this Ramirez has had... He's having a stormer in goal. You feel kind of bad for him being, you know, 2 nil down. Some really good shots by us that got there. Fetz harried on it. We're probably going to see the highlight end. There it is. It's like I'm psychic or something. Fetz again. Kick comes in. Turner clears. Lopez. Back to Fetz. Back to Lopez. Who is hurt. Is this a, this a yellow? Oh, it's a straight red. Wow. Physios come out and everything. Potential needs. This guy came out and broke broke his leg. Alex or Moreno. We'll bring in Rafael Moreno. He likes being on which side? He prefers to be on the left. He prefers to be on the left. What about Alex? Does Alex prefer to be on the left? It doesn't say. All right, perfect. We'll bring Alex in. As Lopez is forced off and Newcastle down to 10 men. Uh, please, what I just saw. Oh, I just said far. Everybody's file. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Told as far as I was, please. Yeah. They're like, yeah, coach. Yeah. We're, we're pissed off. We didn't play well either. I mean, no, you play this play. Wait, no. What are you talking about? Yeah, coach. We're going to go kill him. Kill him in the second. Okay. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Pepe's like, don't worry. They will die. Pepe is a man that does whatever he wants. Sure. Okay. Peps. Uh, <laughs> Here we go again as the team as we drive it forward. Watson's there. Fetz finds out in the re rebound. His third of the season, first for the first for the club in the prem. And we go three 0 up. You got to think if uh, we'll do our normal thing here, but I'll wait and see how the score gets. If it starts getting too out of hand, I'll pull back and I'll let some of the younger guys come in here. As things are quickly looking very, very good for us. Yeah, make that change. All right, 60 minutes. It's it's all over, but the kitchen's like, Pepe comes off. Grant Poole, who is going to be deputizing as our backup striker this year. Once again, he's not quite Pepe, but boy, is he explosive. And uh, I'm excited to have him come in here. Uh, Fetz can come out for... Well, Monfonte can play on this side? What's his feet like? He's got strong either foot. All right. Yeah, let's get Monfonti in the game. And we'll go like that for now. Make our two subs. Just get Pepe off. Just get him a breather. He's going to be used a lot this year, as we know. And I want to get Monfonti a little bit of run out time. As now this is done, let's get... Who is also tired? 
The problem is, when, well, we can do this with Martinez. Put a knight there. But no, we're going to take, uh, swap these two around, take him off, put... Oh, that's right. That's right. He had to make that one sub. Or, mm hmm Mm-hmm. I see what you're doing here, game. Anyways, one thought he could play out there on the right hand side. As Watson finds Martinez over there to right, who gets it to Grant Poole, who sends it just wide for a goal kick. But good to see Poole involved in the action. As time is just gonna tick, 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 tick away. And a pretty tame second half. But well, really, we put our foot off the gas in the last sixty se the last uh, forty seconds, anyways, forty seconds, forty minutes. Uh, all those competitive. Yvonne Foyth made his first ever appearance for Newcastle. Really? Like, yeah, that Yvonne Foyth. Um, Mannion, Aguirre, tons of guys. Keating made his two hundred I don't know why this doubled up, but two hundred and seventy fifth career league appearance. Alex made his one hundredth lead appearance Alex Oh Alex the good <laughs> those like Infante's made his competitive debut. Uh happy with the way you guys played. Well done. It was a good win all around. Infante makes the debut Good for him. Easy scoring. Fetz, you were superb. Let's talk to the... Uh, let's attend the press conference. Joe Keith, don't think he can confident his injuries. He was outstanding today. I'd rather not discuss injuries. I'm not committed to this stage. I'd rather not discuss injuries. Uh, I don't exactly how I'll be out for long or how it's affected. How do you get along with Joe? We get along very well. He's one of the few good guys in soccer. And Lopez, five to six weeks. Don't worry about your injury. That's all right because we have if, if we're deep in a if we're deep in a position it's probably it's probably center back by the way Ken Watt can play there we're deep at center back we have if you look at Alex we got Lopez we've got Gustav Renzo who yeah he can definitely play there so can Moreno and so can uh Washington Andre. So we've got a few guys who can definitely deputize in that role. But that's going to end it up here for now. I think when we come back, we're going to come back for the Champions League competition schedule. We want the schedule. Uh, yep, right there. Champions League. Going to go right to it. Um, abbreviated game schedule this time. Get some. We'll get some league games in here and there, but we look kind of Man City could be a good game, but I don't think we come back. Yeah, I think we do. Champions League group stage, see how the rest of the group is. And then maybe Liverpool or Tottenham. Anyways, I've been James, you've been you. This has been Tick Whippies FC. We'll discuss all that later, but we'll see you back here for the Champions League. Bye-bye. <laughs>